Hi, everybody. It's uh, Father Ed Wade. Sorry for this. We, <clears throat> my ability to um, do these videos are changed because the uh, website has been changing all over the place. So forgive me for running all over the place. And let me get my cage here so I'm, you're not looking at my clothes rack because I celebrate this Mass in the room, in my room here. And basically, this is meant always for those who can't go to church because of different things, physical incapacity or lockdown. Uh, it's also meant for people who, uh, who who are interested in what I'm doing or trying to do. But mainly, it's, it's for the shut-ins and the people where they can't get the Mass, as I said before. So it's basically for you and to share what I believe the Holy Spirit is telling me to share with you. Uh, and today is the 34th Sunday of Ordinary Time, and we're pressing in toward Lent. No, it's the 33rd Sunday, excuse me. We're pressing doing Lent, and doing Lent, it was Advent, sorry about that. And we see two themes developing. One is the coming of the first Christ on Christmas, and a lot of the readings uh, coming in the, the readings during the week and on the weekends up to and including uh, Advent is on the second coming uh, of Christ. And when that when he means he comes to judge both the living and the dead. So you and I are living between these two epics, between the future coming and the, uh, and the first coming. And how do we prepare for the second coming? That's it, because we're all we're all going to die. You know, we're all going to die. And how we live our lives will predetermine where we spend eternity. At worst, hell. At best, heaven. And uh, after that, we... Uh, purgatory. Personally, I want to go to heaven. <laughs> if I can avoid purgatory, I want to avoid purgatory. But that's where I am anyway. So let's get it together. Thank you very much for welcoming me into your homes, your houses, those who watch this video, those who share it. And hopefully the Holy Spirit will be with us during this time as I celebrate this Mass for you, for all my Facebook friends, my Ed Wade Facebook friends, and also my um, Ring of Fire Facebook friends. So, peace be to you, peace to your home. That God will guide you, bless you, protect you, lead you, heal you, mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, and bring your, your, your family together. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The entrance antiphon is the Lord said, I think thoughts of peace and not of affliction. You will, you will call upon me, and I will answer you, and I will lead you back to captives from every place. In the name of the Father, and the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Communion says the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, in order to prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery, let us now call to mind our sins. Not somebody else's sins. Our sins. Lord, for the time times that we've lacked love for you and for all peoples who despite their skin, the language they speak, the culture they come from, because they're all made in your image and likeness, Lord, have mercy. Lord, we can't do it our own. We, we need the Holy Spirit. So fill us, empower us, and guide us, especially as we live between the first coming and the second coming. Lord, have mercy. Lord, I ask your blessings and mercy and forgiveness for each and every one of us, for all the priests, the religious, popes, not necessarily this pope, all popes. We've had great saints, but we've also had some that have been scalawags, historically. For all the bishops, for all peoples, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, and through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, 
all the angels and saints, have mercy on us for God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King. O oh God, our Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the, you, whoops, let me repeat it. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, and you alone are the Lord God, and you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Grant us, we pray, Lord, our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. At that time, and in those days, I, Daniel, heard the word of the Lord. At that time, there shall arise Michael, the great surpassed in distress, since nations be began until that time. At that time, your people shall escape everyone who is found written in the book. May those shall be everlasting horror and disgrace. But those who, who will shine brightly like the splendor of a firmament and thus who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken, no, excuse me, the responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 16. O oh Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who holds fast my lot. I set the Lord ever before me, and with him and my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. You are my inheritance, O oh Lord. Therefore my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices, and my body too abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. You are my inheritance, O your right hand forever. And the second reading is taken from the first letter to the Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 11 to 14, and also verse 18. Brothers and sisters, every priest stand daily at his ministry, offering frequency those same sacrifices that can take away sins. But the one offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering he has made perfect forever those who are being consecrated. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offering for sin. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, be vigilant, 
at all times and pray that you have the strength to stand before the Son of Man. Alleluia, alleluia. Now, the, today's gospel is in the 30th week of ordinary time is taken from St. Mark chapter 13, verses 24 to 32. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days, after the tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the sky, and the powers in heaven will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory, and then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds and from the ends of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches become tender and sprouts leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near and the gates Amen, I say to you that this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken a place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But on that day, one hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father and the Gospel. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Well, as I said before in the beginning of the, of the Mass, uh, Jennifer Sinclair, who helps me to put this thing together on the Internet, asked me, what's the theme? And we've been talking about healing, and I want to continue that. And I'll see if I can bring that into what I really, really want to share with you today. Because certainly healing was a, a major ministry of... of uh, is, is, is it part of God's work? It's part of God's work and his mission, and he told us to continue that work. But I want to I want to continue with this idea of the tribulation. You know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see uh, to see the problems in the world that are happening all around us, whether it's in Europe or Latin, in Asia, Latin America, and also in the United States. Things have radically changed, although it, since this President Joe Biden took office. Now, I'm not blaming everything on him because these problems have been happening, been pushing to this point, to this very, to the very time at which we're living. And this goes back years and years and years. But he hasn't helped the situation. He has not helped the situation by his policies and decisions. But I don't want to get into that. This is in a political homily. But again, I always go back to a, a theologian who influenced me greatly when I was in the seminary, Karl Barth. I read the newspaper in one hand, and I keep the Bible in the other. I see what the Bible tells us what we should do, and then the newspaper tells us what we're doing. And so when I look at this and I put them together, I'm saying something's going on. And so when you look at the book of Daniel, the first reading, Daniel, Daniel talks about, uh, let me see if I get it here. Um, Daniel talks about that there's a coming time when there's going to be a separation. I mean, it's prophetic. Daniel's a prophet. And if you read the gospel, Jesus says the same thing. Jesus says the same thing. Jesus also says that he didn't come to bring us, he didn't come to bring peace in the world, but a sword to separate husband and wife, children with their parents, etc., 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 and so these are the times in which we're living in. We live in these times of division and chaos. So we need the people that are not caught by surprise, but to be able to look at the signs of times and to see how we need to relate to it. Based on what Daniel the prophet says, the book of Revelation where John the apostle says, and also what Jesus himself says. Not what we think, not what we but what they say. And so you look at this, you see, between, uh, let's get, without getting heavily into politics, the Democrats and the Republicans, the media, uh, the, the, you know, academia, all these things that you've heard me say many, many times 
on some of my uh, my my posts in, in the New Testament. Excuse me, my posts in my Ed Wade site and also my Ring of Fire site. And so I'm looking at this and I'm saying, I got to speak about this because I believe it. And I can't worry about whether people like it or not or don't like me or don't don't like me or like me. Uh, or I don't, you know, there's some of these power. I don't like them. I don't like them, but I'm not called to like them. I'm called to love them. I'm called to love them. That's the big thing. I don't like certain politicians. I don't care whether they're left or the right. But I'm sure they don't like me for whatever reason. I don't know that. I'm not here. But I wasn't I wasn't created and ordained to be liked. Or I wasn't born and created by God himself to be liked. I was ordained or created by him and ordained by him to be a witness to him. With some sex I've had, but also some failures. But I, I'm trying. I'm trying and I'm trusting on the Holy Spirit to guide me so that I'll say things that need to be said and avoid things that don't always need to be said. And I probably varied on that, but, but, but I'm committed to this. I'm committed because I'm committed for the salvation of souls. Souls are being lost today because they're being lied to. They're being lied to. And some of this corruption, and you've heard me again now saying, I'd, ver, I'd, I'd ven item. You know, it's coming from the, in some cases, coming from the church, from ministers and clergy. Uh, and also, and I point myself in that. And for politicians and academia and music and the media, we're being lied to. As if God doesn't exist. We've thrown him under the bus. We've thrown him under the bus. You know, and we be, we're becoming an atheistic and agnostic nation. We're tearing apart our Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and the advance of Marxism. Read the Communist Manifesto, for God's sake. We need to become educated, and we're not. People have no idea, in many cases. Many have no idea what's going on. And I choose to be loyal. I don't choose to be a conservative Catholic priest or a liberal Catholic priest. What I choose to be is loyal. I want to be loyal and be quick to repent when I fail. Thank God I live with other priests in the house. I can knock on the, well, they'd knock on my door to go to confession, but they say, oh, could you hear my confession too? So oh, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. That's my goal. That's that's my retirement plan, is, is to spend eternity with Christ and Our Lady and the saints and the angels. And that should be your retirement plan too. And so as we're caught between this, the beginning of Christ's coming, the first coming, the second coming, we're in this spiritual war, and we got to look at it. we got to look at what Paul says in Ephesians 6, 10 and following. Chapter 6, verse 10 and the following, that we're in a spiritual war. That's that's the modus operandi behind all the things that we see happening. We see Lucifer arm wrestling with Christ, and he's the one causing this division, and he's mutated into politics. He's mutated into the church in many ways. But he did that with Jesus, didn't he? He said Jesus had to deal with uh, Judas. So there's nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. And so this battle that we're in is for the salvation of souls, for your soul, your husband's soul, your wife's soul, your children's soul, your relative's soul, everybody's soul. It has nothing to do with the color of your skin or language that you speak. It's because you've been created in image and likeness, and the devil hates it the image and likeness of God. That's why he aborts babies, innocent babies, innocent. They've done nothing wrong. They didn't come, in, come into this world. They're coming into this world, and we try to stop it through contraception, and we try to stop it through abortion, before and after the fact. And we have people standing up like the President of the United States and um, Nancy Pelosi, not just limited, and they're sure they're probably Republicans on the right too. Who were saying, "Oh, it's a procedure. Abortion is a medical procedure." No, it's not. It's murder. It's murder. It's murder. It's murder. And then, as you heard me say, ad nauseum, using the scientifically study for vaccines. Hello, hello, hello. And 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 so this is. This is the battle that we're in, and it's serious because it has eternal consequences for each and every soul that's still alive and breathing. And so that's the battle we're in. So as we look at the Mass, and I want to keep my eyes on my clock so I don't go too long with you guys, 
and women, by the way. I use that term generically. Uh, what Dingle says, at that time there also arise Michael, the great prince, the guardian of the people, and it shall be a time of unsurpassed in distress. Michael the archangel, he's the prince, he's one of the archangels. And he said at a time of distress, and look at what's going on around the world. Look at this distress, not just a pandemic, but look at the distress that's coming on. Political wars, violence, drugs, sexual freedom. Uh, you, you know, again, you hear me say this ad nauseum, but you don't have to be a rocket scientist. If you've got anything between this year and this year, except empty space, we've got to be able to see what's going on. And then how do we counter it? How do we counter it? Besides saying, oh my God, whoa, 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 gee whiz. Well, talk, we, we can talk, but we've got to get off the fence. We've got to get off the fence and into the fray. We've got to get into the foxholes. You know, as I was in the Marine Corps, right? When the bullets start coming and the shells start coming, you got to get low. You got to get low into the ground into the foxhole so they can't get you. And so that's what I see the Lord doing. He's building foxholes. He's gathering together Christians. He's separating the flock. The goats on one side and the sheep on the other. And, and that's what I mean by the second coming. Because when he comes then, then it's going to be too late. So the need for repentance is not now, not tomorrow. And for you Catholics, or any, anybody watching this is Catholic, get the confession. Get the confession. Go as frequently as you can and repent and ask for God's grace, not only to have your sins forgiven, our sins forgiven, but also to grow in holiness so that we won't continue the same thing over and over and over again. And when we go to confession, many times we confess the same thing, don't we? Oh, I did this three times, I did this four times, I did this five times. And we're a Catholic, you did it times, that you did it. Nobody put a gun to your head, my head. We did it. And we're addicted because we keep on falling. It's an addiction, every bit as much as alcohol or drugs or sex. We're, it's an addiction. And it's rooted in itself into our mind and heart because we've welcomed it in. Well, we gotta throw it out. And Jesus is gonna help us to do that because of his blood. By the blood of the Lamb, we are set free. By the blood of the Lamb, we are set free. Let's go on. You are my inheritance. This is Psalm 16. And we got to realize that when Jesus created us in his image and likeness, we're his inheritance. And we, we're sons and daughters. You know, we're princes. We are. I say this many times myself. I'm a prince. Well, I'm also a demonic sometimes, you know, some of the things I do. You know. But when Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood, he brought me into his family. If I'm going to call him King Jesus and he's my father and my father's a king, that means I'm a prince and you're a princess. Now, are we living as a prince and princess? That's another thing. That's why it's key for repentance and continual conversion. He says, O oh Lord, my allotted portion of my cup, you it is, who hold fast my lot. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. And so we got to set on a continual basis the Lord before us. We need his grace, we need his strength and his power into our lives. The second reading is taken from the book of St. Hebrews by St. Paul. Brothers and sisters, every priest stands daily at his ministry, offering frequently those same sacrifices that can never be taken away. But the one offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of the cross. Now he waits until his enemies are put under his footstool. And that's what God's going to do. He's going to separate the ghosts and the lamb and put his enemies under his footstool. Those who judged him, he's going to judge. Hello? Those who judged him, he's going to judge. And based on that judgment will be determined how we live our lives, right? That's why we need, thank God, thank God for the sacraments. Thank God for the absolution. Sometimes I'm so humbled when somebody comes to me to confession that I absolve them. That the Lord has given me that power and authority to free people from sin. And yet we don't see many people going to confession. 
anymore. Do they think they're saints? They think they're immaculate conceived? I don't think so. Or we just say, well, it's not sinful. Well, it is sinful. If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck and waddles like a duck, it's a duck, no matter what I call it. I can call it a pigeon, I can call it anything I want, but it's a duck, because it walks, quacks, waddles like a duck. That's it. That's the bottom line. Let's go to the Gospel. The Gospel is, is according to St. Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, in these days after the tribulation, now that's what I, when Jennifer asked me, what do you want to call this? The tribulation. And this is the word that came in the first sentence of Matthew 13, chapter 24, 32. The sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling apart, and the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Now, I'm not going to get into this, but Google, Google, or use whatever search platform, the three days of darkness, and look at some of the saints who have talked about this. And Jesus talked about it. When it happens, there's going to be three days of darkness. Now, we can look at that literally. Did he really say it? What does that mean? Well, look at what the saints are saying. I mean, the canonized saints about the three days of darkness. All I know is if it comes while I'm alive, I want to be ready. I want to be ready and prepared. And that's the urgency of these times in which we're living in, as we propose. Because we're starting Advent, this little baby that is born into a virgin named Mary comes to save us from eternal damnation. And that's, that's, that, that in itself, I could go on and go on and go on, but I don't want to take too much of your time. But to ask the Holy Spirit to prepare our hearts for his first coming. You know, because that's only going to be in a couple of weeks, six next month. And, uh, and to repent, and to repent. Okay, Lord Jesus, we're a motley crew, but Lord, we're your motley crew, because you created us. We're damaged goods, but you've come to heal us. Not only to forgive us our sins, but to heal us. And so this Mass is being offered up, first of all, that you cleanse our souls, our minds, of the sin of Adam and Eve that's mutated to this very day in each and every one of us, with no exceptions. We ask us as we celebrate this Mass, whether it's physical or whether your own church, wherever you go, that when we receive your most holy body and blood that you set us free from what we've inherited, as the scriptures tell us, we've inherited this DNA to sin. Lord, cleanse our hearts, wash us clean by your blood, and set us free. Set us free, Lord. And there are those who have come to this Mass that are physically sick, with various diseases, some that they've inherited through their family tree. So we ask for the cleansing of the family bloodline from our fathers and our mothers, of anything that's congenital, anything that's come through the family tree. Uh, we also pray for all sickness, disease, diabetes, cancer, spina bifida. Lord, I, I feel powerless in many ways because I'm here doing a video and you're there and I can't see the people and I can't lay hands on them, but you can. And Lord Jesus, I trust in you. I trust in you that you can do it and you want to do it. Many times when people ask to be healed, you say to them, do you believe I can do this? Well, I know you can do it because I've seen it happen. I've seen people get out of wheelchairs after 13 years crippled. I've seen it when the hell elevated the host. In Lourdes, I almost fell off the altar. Couldn't believe what I saw. So I know what happens. I saw a doctor come in who was the dean of Dental School in Louisiana State University. And I was in Medjugorje, he said Mass in the side room in the Statue of Our Lady. And we were up praying, I heard this cracking, like <laughs> And I looked up at this guy who came in like this, and he's a dentist. That would concern me if he's gonna take all my teeth. But all of a sudden, his hands started to straighten out. He's figuring, I actually heard it, what caught my attention was hearing it. So I've seen it all, I've I, I seen it and I know it. And 
And so I pray for that gift for all priests who say Mass, especially for the bishops next week. As they meet, they're going to be talking about the, the liturgy, the Eucharist. And I talked to a bishop who contacted me the other day uh, and wanted to know more about the healing of the, the healing of the Mass and the Eucharist. And I shared with him. And I, that was a shock. I couldn't believe a bishop called me, right? And uh, so I'll be praying for them that the, the bishops will catch this. And I'm, I'm a firm believer, you know, that if, if people... If people start seeing people heal, physically, spiritually, emotionally, at Mass, at Mass, receiving the Eucharist, let me tell you something. They won't be walking out the door leaving. They're going to be climbing through the windows and through the doors because, hey, this is smoking because something's going on in this church. Something's going on at this Mass. So people need to see. People follow Jesus not just by what they heard him say, but what they saw him do. And so we're living in an age where seeing can be believing. It'll certainly bring put the non-believers to start to question things. And so anyway, okay, I'm still looking at Mike. Okay, I got to move on. Let's take a moment and pray for one another uh, by praying the prayer, the Apostles' Creed that we acknowledge our faith as Catholics. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the Father of Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things, life visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for our men and salvation that came down from heaven and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate by the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he, he, was, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. And he rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge both the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and where the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one baptism, in the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. How I love the Catholic Church and how privileged I feel to be a priest, weak as I am, broken as I am, that the Lord called me. Well, I'm going to ask him why. I'm sure his answer will probably be something like, because. <laughs> anyway. Lord, I thank you for my mother and my father that brought me into this world, mom and dad, and my sister Barbara, my brother Jeff. I thank you for all the people watching this video, uh, my Facebook friends and Ed Wade and Ring of Fire. Oh, Lord God, I love you. Increase that love that I have for you and for all of your people. Whether I like them or not, help me to love them and see within each and every one of them your presence. And I ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as I receive the Eucharist, O Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, model of Christian discipleship, my Queen, I give myself completely to Jesus through you. Be my advocate and strong defense this day. Preserve my unity and fidelity to Holy Church. Guide me in the life of the Spirit. Keep me steadfast in my mission and ever deepen my love for Christ and his Holy Cross. Lead me, O Mother of Priests, to perfectly glorify Jesus Christ, the Father, in the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as I receive the Holy Eucharist, I pray, Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. 
separated from you, let me never be. From the malignant enemy, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me. To come to you, bid me. That I may praise you in the company of all the saints for to all eternity. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this bread to offer, which earth is given in human hands and made will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And by the mystery of this water and this wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Jesus Christ who humbles himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. Spiritual drink. With a humble spirit, with a contrite heart, may we be acceptable by you, Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, O Lord God. Wash away from me all of my sins and cleanse me from all my iniquity. with a humble spirit and with a contrite heart. May we be acceptable by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in yours be in your sight this day be pleasing to you, O Lord God. Wash away from me, Lord, all of my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins, and my brothers and sisters pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept this sacrifice for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Okay, I'm going to use Canon 2. Bear with me. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And at the time he was betrayed, he had unwillingly into his passion, he took the, the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, repeat it myself. Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, and he said, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, and it was shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith, we proclaim your death, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel Carter, and our Bishop here in Houston, Bishop Ito, his associate, and all of your clergy, remember also all of our brothers and sisters and who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, for it is through him 
with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father. Eloi, Eloi, laba sabatani, sholom orokote de shilam andakata de shilam akata shatam, kende kilam roshilam yamokoshi ende kiyakai, shilam roshilam ahanda shandakai. And now at the Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, praise be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy that we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, My peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not in our sins, but look on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. And may the mingling of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bring eternal life to each of us who receive it. Agnus Dei, qui tolus peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolus peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolus peccata mundi, Dona Nobis Pacem. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your, through your death, you gave life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all of my sins and from every evil. Lord, keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Let me read the other one too. And may the receiving of your holy body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your mercy, be for me protection in my mind and in my body and a healing remedy. That's for all of us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those who are now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm going to say what I said a thousand many years ago. Or Lord's. I expect to see signs and wonders and miracles with the Eucharist. Because it's you. And you're not limited by space and time. Even though this is a video, you can go beyond it. So I receive this for all my brothers and sisters who cannot receive it for different, different reasons. And that what you do in me, you do in them. Heal the sick of mind, body, and spirit. Lord Jesus, I trust in you. And may the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
And may the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Come, oh come, come into my room, come into my room, with the fragrance of your presence. Come, oh come, come into my room, come into my room with the fragrance of your presence. Go forth, O oh Lord, to all who are watching this video. Go forth to all who are watching this video and bring the power of your presence. Go, 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 Holy Spirit. Go, Holy Spirit. To all of your people. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I pray for, I've seen names here, I'm going to read them off. Um, for Elizabeth to have a complete healing. For Jenner Bordelon, my Lord and my God. To Victoria Cook, thank you Jesus. For Carol Aloya. Pray for our dear Lord to hear her legs in the mighty name of Jesus. To Beth Ann Shepherd for healing of cancer. For a friend, Teresa. Oh Lord God, I see these names and I'm not too sure how to figure this out on this site, but you know who's trying to contact us and we stand with them no matter who they are, no matter where they are. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I take authority over the father of lies, the prince of this world, in the holy name of Jesus, through this Eucharistic sacrifice that you send Our Lady to crush the head of the serpent as he slithers through the halls of the Congress and the Oval Office and the political, uh, the pol the political realm of the world, where no matter what side of the aisle they're on, that you enter into the church and you crush the head of the serpent that's mutated even within the church, that you set up my brother priests and bishops and the Holy Father who's ever in need to bless them and protect them and guide them. Release your power in your presence, Lord. Release your power in your presence. Release your power in your presence. Shanda kote de shila maramborole biyange yakam shaham de kata shaha she moho miya kata miya shiyende i hora miya nda kote de si in el nombre de Jesus glar kote de shala makata da yashama kuya shiyende. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Bear with me. A song that was written in the seminary by a young man who died a few years ago as a priest, Father Barry Fury. I love this song. I kept a copy of it, and that's years ago. He was a musician and gifted, became ordained priest for a call in somewhere in uh, Connecticut. Barry Fury, a very handsome guy and a tremendously gifted musician. And when he preached, he used to play his guitar when he would preach. I had seen Barry since he was ordained, but I always remember that song. And I'm going to replace it, the word me, for us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us.
for my eyes that see. Thank you for all the things you've done. Thank you, Lord, for everyone. Thank you for the birds that sing their sweet song. Thank you for your love that conquers over wrong. And for all the times I was too blind to see that your love was coming after us. Thank you for the friendly smiles that come our way. Thank you for the cheerful words that people say. And in hours when we are feeling blue, it's time we know your love will always see us through. And for all the people gathered around us, as we lift up our voices, join to pray, that we all realize the dignity that lies within our brotherhood with thee. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shila marote shikati di shiende ki. Kara shikati di shila marote shiende katatai. Hallelujah. Here's our hope, brothers and sisters. It's our only hope. Let me pray. And then I say to you that whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you will receive it and it shall be given to you, says the Lord. Well, that's the, pre that's the communion preface. I didn't know that. Well, I, we asked. Do it, Lord. Do it. Especially bless the bishops this week. In conclusion, we have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring you, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring all of us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God be upon all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has not ended. It's just begun to bear fruit. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of the Eucharist, be with us and guide us. Amen. God love you, and uh, hopefully, if I'm still alive, I'll be with you next Sunday at the same time. Thank you.